Hello and welcome to The Food Chain with me, Manuela Saragossa. We're back with a new weekly series of the programme, examining the science, business and culture of what we eat and drink. This week, what prisoners are fed and why in the US, which has the world's largest prison population, it's become a human rights issue. I think people heard about it and saw parallels to, you know, bread and water diets in medieval times. Also, when food and a prisoner's right to refuse it becomes a political weapon. I shall never forget, as long as I live, the awful sound of the choking, which went on practically, well, nearly all day by the time they got round to the lot of us. But cooking can also rehabilitate convicts. We'll hear about a fine dining experience from behind bars served up by prisoners. It's probably the hardest thing that I've found that they really, really are afraid of. And I'll even say, you don't mind going to rob a bank. You're too scared to go and take an order. That's all coming up here on The Food Chain. But first, there are just over 10 million people behind bars worldwide, according to the Institute for Criminal Policy Research. 2.2 million of them are in the US. What and how do they eat? Nothing that I knew from my days of cooking beforehand was useful for me in prison. I had to relearn how to cook. That's Daniel Jenis in New York. He's a former convict who served 10 years for robbery. These days, he's a reformed man. What did he eat in prison and what did food mean to him while he was there? Michel Fleury went to meet him. I was cooking with electricity. I was cooking without fresh foods. I was cooking with mayonnaise for oil. Uh, I didn't see a, an egg that wasn't powdered for 10 years. So everything had to be relearned. Food uh, was was really was vital in, in, in many ways. Well, first of all, because it kept me alive. But beyond that, food is a little joy, a, a little happiness, just something that gives you a reason to wake up in the morning because, uh, you know, the, the, there might be frosted flakes instead of cornflakes. And there you go, you've been, you've been uh, blessed with something in a, in a harsh world with uh, very little potential for anything ha happy to happen to you. Uh, so that's when small things like frosted flakes begin to mean something. I once saw um, a can of vegetables preserved in cognac go for $100. But that's because people were drinking it, of course. But uh, nevertheless, that's, you know, I, ha I myself bought prime rib.